So this is a, um, a detailed map of Antarctica. So you've got the, uh, you know, East Antarctic ice sheet over here. You've got the West Antarctic ice sheet. You've got the Antarctic Peninsula. And um, you've got all the different seas and bays, etc. cetera. Um, so this vid in this video, I'm going to talk all about what's going on in Antarctica because there's a lot of worrying signs um, coming from the place um, which ha will have a huge impact on abrupt climate system change. And uh, from the tabs up here, you can see, you know, these are all various, uh, you know, there might be half a dozen to a dozen tabs, uh, you know, making up a topic which I want to talk about. So clearly I'm way behind on my videos. Uh, so here we are in September. So it's time to motor through and give you loads of videos on updates as to what's happening with the climate system. Okay, so um, so basically, um, what I'm going to talk about, you're probably aware of what's some of the things that are going on in Antarctica. You may have heard of the massacre of four colonies of emperor penguins and those are in the um bellingshausen sea area um and i'll talk about the paper that uh, describes those colonies and and what happened you know you know that the melt rates have been greatly increasing in antarctica um a paper came out just recently talking about antarctic temperature amplification. So I've often talked about Arctic temperature amplification, and that's because the Arctic is becoming a darker place with the loss of sea ice and snow cover. So it's absorbing more sunlight and warming. Because the, of the tremendous warming in the Arctic, there's less heat moving from the equator up into the uh, northern hemisphere. So there's more heat going into the southern hemisphere. So we're seeing massive increases in ocean heating um, in the southern hemisphere, um, we're seeing massive uh, loss of sea ice for the last two years in the southern hemisphere. We're missing millions of, of square kilometers of sea ice. So when we go into our northern hemisphere winter, you know, our boreal uh, northern hemisphere winter, you know, we're heading into the fall now, it's September, you know, we're heading into uh, the summer for Antarctica, the sunlight um, is poking up above the horizon and it's discovering a world in Antarctica that is much, much darker because of the tremendous amount of missing sea ice. So, so this energy will be absorbed and greatly increase the water temperatures around Antarctica. Also, we're seeing a loss of the stratification. Normally you have uh, warm, fresher water on the surface and you have... Um, or cold fresh water on the surface and you have warm salty water below um the this because the water is warm that makes it more buoyant but the salt is it's very very salty so the net effect is the density is lower this water is several hundred meters under the surface and that's starting to breach the surface there's also changes in the southern annular mode the wind circulations around antarctic and so on. So I'm going to talk about all of those things. And, uh, you know, one of the net results is that we can expect uh, much larger levels of sea level rise. Okay, so I'll be coming back to this map um, quite often because, um, you know, there's uh, what I'm trying to describe, you know, what's going on in specific regions, etc. Okay, so let's have a look here at this Guardian article which just came out uh, September 7th. So it just came out yesterday. Um, and Antarctic warming is much faster than models predicted in deeply concerning sign for sea levels. So there, in this study, this peer reviewed scientific study that just came out, there's direct evidence of polar amplification on Antarctica. Okay, and this has, of course, huge implications for ice loss, not just sea ice loss, but ice loss on the continent as well. And here, here's a penguin sitting on an ice floe. Um, okay, so Antarctica is likely warming at almost twice the rate of the rest of the world. 
Okay, um, so we know that the Arctic is warming. They used to say two to three times. It's actually, you know, a paper um, last year said four times for most areas. There is a seasonal variation in that rate of warming, uh, but basically it's polar temperature amplification uh, because sea poles are becoming uh, darker places with the loss of sea ice, loss of snow cover, and this is causing greatly increased absorption of solar radiation in the respective summers in the two different hemispheres. So, you know, the Arctic is, I've been saying for years, it's five to eight times faster than the global average, while Antarctica is warming at almost twice the rate of the rest of the world. It's faster than climate change models are predicting, of course, the models can't keep up, and it has huge implications for global sea level rise, loss and loss of uh, ice on Antarctica. So in this new paper that just was just published, scientists analyzed 78 different Antarctic ice cores to recreate temperature. So in the ice cores, um, you can measure, um, you, you can basically date the cores based on, for example, things like volcanic eruptions, uh, you know, um, isotopes, and you can recreate the temperatures from the oxygen isotopes, and you can, re you know, recreate the greenhouse gases at the time from, from bubbles that are trapped in the ice, etc. So, you know, um, so we can go back uh, 100,000 years um, in Greenland ice cores and almost a million years in Antarctic ice cores, but these Antarctic ice cores that are looked at are only to look going back a thousand years for this study. So 78 cores, a thousand years going, going back. So the warming across the continent now is outside what you would expect from natural variability or natural swings. You know, West Antarctic is, um, a region, and, and if I go back to here, so this is a region here, West Antarctic Ice Sheet, the Antarctic Peninsula. So West Antarctic, um, there's about five meters of sea level rise um, from the ice, uh, if all the ice melted on West Antarctic, and Greenland about seven meters, and totally about 70 to 80 meters. So there's some from mountainous uh, glaciers, but the vast bulk of it is from the East Antarctic ice sheet. Okay, so West Antarctic is particularly vulnerable to warming um, with an ice sheet uh, that could push up global sea level rise by several meters if it collapsed, so five meters basically for West Antarctic. Um, and the warming there is twice the rate suggested by the computer models. So we've known about this polar uh, amplification or polar temperature amplification for a long time. It's often called Arctic temperature amplification or Arctic amplification, but we've also got this phenomena that we see and have talked about for years in the Arctic. This is also occurring in Antarctica. So the study was done, a French group did the study, so they found direct evidence from the ice cores that Antarctica is undergoing polar amplification. Um, and um, this is significant warming in Antarctica, far beyond natural variability. And, and they've got the natural variability for the last thousand years. So Antarctica is huge, right? It's the size of the continental U.S. and Mexico combined, but it's sparse. the data is sparse there. There's only 23 permanent weather stations. Only three of those are away from the coast. The other ones are all on the coast. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of data. But so they looked at 78 Antarctic ice cores that hold the record of temperature and then compared those temperatures to climate models. Okay, so this research was published in the journal Nature Climate Change. There is a paywall for this paper and I haven't um, gotten the um, actual peer-reviewed paper. I've got the results from it. Um, when I get the actual paper, I'll probably do a separate video just on the paper. 
But the results are Antarctica is warming at a rate of between 0.22 Celsius and 0.32 Celsius per decade. And that compares to the 0.18 degrees Celsius per decade predicted by climate models. This is a global average, right? Up until 2010. And if you recall James Hansen's papers, he said that's increased 50 to 100%. So after 2010, the rate of climb is 0.27 Celsius to 0.36 Celsius. Okay, so, and that's sort of the rate that, that it, we're seeing in Antarctica. So it, it's still much faster than the global average. Now, some of the warming is due to a change in the pattern of winds, or it's masked by it. So the southern annular mode is going more and more positive, and that's actually, that actually should decrease temperatures um, in, in Antarctica. So Antarctica is, the warming is overcoming the changes from that southern annular mode positive um, phase. Okay, and that's due to global heating and also part of, partly from the loss of ozone over the continent. Um, okay, uh, okay, so there's other factors coming in. But anyway, the findings, these findings are deeply concerning to the Antarctic uh, research community. All the projections for future sea level rise use these low rates of warming. The models might be underestimating the loss of ice that you might get. So this research is timely given the extreme events we've been seeing in Antarctica. So the Antarctic sea ice is many, many sigma, what, five sigma, six sigma standard deviations below what we would expect. We're missing millions of square kilometers of our Antarctic sea ice. Like I said, this is going to result in greatly increased absorption of solar radiation as we move into the Antarctic summer, the, the northern hemisphere winter. Um, sci scientists are not sure why that's happening. It's been at record low levels over the last two years. Some are suggesting global heating could now be affecting the region. Well, yeah, duh. I mean, like I said, I think if you look at the big picture, because of the huge warming in the Arctic and record uh, sea surface temperatures in the Arctic, say five degrees Celsius warmer than normal off the UK, huge temperatures, you know, rises in the oceans. Um, and we've got the El Nino just starting to ramp up, although it hasn't affected all these things too much yet. Um, so there's the, the Northern hemisphere is warming like crazy. So that heat, so less heat goes there from the equator, more heat goes to Antarctica. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons why we're seeing all these effects. There's like a seesaw between the two poles, if you like. Because of the lack of sea, height, sea ice in the Bellinghausen um, Sea, um, then we had a massive uh, kill off of emperor penguin chicks late in 2022. In four different, col there's five colonies in that region. Four of them got pretty much wiped out. And I'll show you the paper um, that's, that studies that. Um, there's also been record high temperatures. Um, there's a paper, which I'll also show you. There's a weather station at the South Pole um, and it's, there's record high temperatures occurring there. Now, Antarct Antarctica's climate's always had large natural swings, but this study shows that the warming is detectable. Um, it's due to anthropogenic climate change and anthropogenic polar amplification. So, you know, this is very important findings to look in, in terms of considering future changes to Antarctic sea ice, terrestrial and marine ecosystems and sea level rise. Okay, so Anthropogenic polar amplification is occurring in the Arctic already, much sooner than the models say. So future warming will likely be greater than currently projected by climate. So sea level rises will have to be, you know, upped and upped and up in terms of what's expected. And I've talked a lot about sea level rise in, in my previous, previous videos over the last number of years. Okay, so, you know, further loss of sea ice from a warming Antarctica, of course, that ocean warming occurs, 
that changes the global ocean circulation, changes the marine ecosystems. So ocean warming is already melting protective ice shelves in West Antarctica, causing the West Antarctic ice sheet to retreat. Uh, greater warming could lead to more melting of coastal ice shelves um, that protect glaciers. So glaciers, glaciers the, the advance rate to the coast will definitely speed up when we lose coastal ice shells. It's like taking the cork out of the bottle, and we've seen this a lot in Greenland. Um, there's already, you know, we've, we've, we're also seeing it on the Antarctic Peninsula. Um, it's going to become a more widespread occurrence around Antarctica. Loss of sea ice, loss of coastal ice shells, and um, then, uh, you know, much greater ice melt for the ice that is sitting on the land. Okay, so those are the key factors. And let's have a look at some of the details. So, um, again, this is the map here. So, you know, the greatest warming is happening in these regions, but there is widespread warming of Antarctica. So if you look at Climate Reanalyzer, just Google Climate Reanalyzer, and look at the two meter temperature anomaly. Um, if you look at today's weather maps, and you can see the outline of Antarctica is here, and you can see the temperature anomalies. So the Antarctic Peninsula is huge warming, you know, and lots of warming on the West Antarctic ice sheet. Um, there's actually cool, some cooling on the East Antarctic ice sheet. So there's these blobs of hot, temp, of, of, of very, very warm sea uh, 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 air temperature, two meter air temperature anomalies. Okay, um, next to very, very cold anomalies. And if you look at this um, depiction, you can see all the warming here. And this is the real kicker here. So. This is the uh, this is the latest temperature anomalies as of September seventh to uh, today twenty or yesterday twenty twenty three. Um, this is relative to the nineteen seventy nine uh, to two thousand climatology for the specific day of the year, and you can see you know the Arctic is much warmer has a very high temperature anomaly. Antarctic is even higher. The whole Southern hemisphere is much warmer. The Northern hemisphere is even warmer. And the, the global temperature um, is 0.82 degrees Celsius for the world, larger than 1979 to 2000 temperatures for today. And the tropics is even warmer. Okay, so this is very key data. I mean, Climate Reanalyzer is an excellent site, so just Google Climate Reanalyzer and have a look. Um, on Earth Null School, you can see, I just wanted to show you, um, this is sea surface temperature anomalies, and you can see 3.3 uh, degrees Celsius as I move around here, um, 3 degrees, 3.4, 4. this whole region you know, is very, very warm. So we're probably heading into, uh, you know, it looks like we're probably going to head into a super El Nino. But as James Hansen says, most of the effects are seen in the second year after it initiates. So it's still just been initiating. Um, and, uh, you know, it started initiating over the, over the sort of mid to late summer, and it's just getting going. So we're going to have a doozy this year, it looks like. Um, this, like I said, is sea surface temperature anomalies. You can see, uh, you know, the, the very, very warm temperatures mostly up. So the Northern Hemisphere is, is extremely warm, right? All the way across, it's extremely warm. So there's less heat, heat moving there from the equator. Most of the heat is going to the Southern Hemisphere and that includes heat from the El Nino as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is just showing some of the surface winds and you can see the cyclonic activity here. Hurricane Lee went up to category five in like a day or something. You know, Bermuda and who knows where it's gonna go exactly, it's coming this way. It's category five, it'll probably stay category five, you know, over the next, for most of the next week. 
So anyway, that's worth uh, keeping an eye on. So getting back to the Antarctica, something weird's going on. Search for answers as Antarctic sea ice stays at historic lows. Okay, so this is like these are shocking numbers for the lack of sea ice in Antarctica. And there's going to be huge knock-on effects. So, you know, this is an article from the end of July. It's just as bad now. Uh, we're missing, you know, two and a half, almost two and a half million square kilometers of ice, right? That's ice that would reflect sunlight. You know, Antarctic's being in their winter dark, in darkness. So the lack of ice, uh, you know, when the sun comes up and all that energy is absorbed in the open oceans instead of being reflected by the ice, which is now missing, we're going to get a huge ramping up of, of temperature. And I've talked about that in some previous videos. Okay, so um, this is just some anecdotal stuff about, you know, Will Hobbs, ice scientist, uh, you know, every day he'd get the latest data from the government satellite showing how much sea ice is floating around Antarctica. And, you know, he said unprecedented is a word that gets bandied around, bandied around a lot, but it doesn't really get to just how shocking this is. So he's a sea ice scientist at the University of Tasmania. It's very much outside our understanding of this system. So, you know, we hit record lows, uh, you know, um, in uh, February when the ice should be, uh, you know, we hit record lows. Um, there's never been less ice since satellites started tracking the region's sea ice in 1979. Okay, so, so here is, uh, this is some of the sea ice extent, um, the, okay, this is, the red is July 26, 2023, and then the black is the average from the 30-year climatological average, and you can see, you know, wherever the red line is inside, then there's huge amounts of ice missing. So look at this area in particular because this is, I'll get back to this when I talk about those, the death of all those baby penguin chicks. Um, there's, a, there's a couple wiggle plots of the ice and then here we are here and we stayed really low. Um, and so, you know, there, there's, there's, there's huge problems. Um, one of the ideas is the topsy-turvy theory the upper layers of the ocean are stratified. You have a cooler, less saltier layer on top, right? It's less salty because you get a lot of meltwater from the ice, it doesn't have salt in it. And a warmer and denser layer, about 150 to 300 meters below. And with the increase of the Southern Annular Mode, you can get more stirring up of the water. So maybe that warmer, denser water is coming up from below and wiping out the, the sea ice. Okay, uh, but there's also, you know, huge knock-on effects, not just for the krill, fish, penguin, seals, and other animals that rely on it. Um, you know, loss of ice means less of the sun's energy is reflected back to space, causing more warming of the ocean. You know, of course, the Antarctic sea ice influences the way the ocean circulates oxygen and nutrients around the globe. It's whole, part of the whole thermohaline circulation system. So we, when we were concerned about the AMOC shutting off. Well, part of the reason, you know, the whole system is slowing down. The whole ocean circulation system is being stressed. You know, sea ice also protects the ice attached to the land, so-called fast ice, because it buffers the waves, right? So with no sea ice, the waves can be much larger on the coast. They can break on the ice shelves, break away the ice shelves faster. Then the ice sheet on the land can slide into the ocean faster. I said like re releasing a, taking the cork out of a champagne bottle. And that r will of course raise sea levels globally at faster and faster rates. Okay. I think everyone's asking what's happening right now. It's unbelievable. There's this worry about what the world, what kind of world we're coming into. Well, it's abrupt climate system change. 
Okay, so there's a desperate need for more research on Antarctica and funding. Some of the funding was actually being cut. Okay, so if, and it's a big if, this is a functional collapse of the system, that means we need to reappraise our sea level projections and also, you know, many other tipping points will be reached. Okay, so this is, uh, this is all very important uh, stuff. Okay, if you go to Arctic Sea Ice News and Analysis, they always do a good analysis. This is the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And you can see, um, you know, they talk about the uh, what's going on in, in the uh, Arctic mostly, but there is a section. This is interesting, cascading impacts of changing sea ice conditions on marine ecosystems, right? Every day there's a huge biomass migration. It's the largest on Earth, the zooplankton, they migrate during the night towards the ocean surface to feed on the phytoplankton and then they retreat to deeper depths during the daylight to avoid predation. Okay, and the ice, of course, affects that and, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of, of, of implications. But I, I want to go back, I want to go down to Antarctica in particular. So this is Antarctic sea ice extent. Um, this is uh, as of, I think that says September 4th. 2023 so you can see it here so it's going up you know it's it can almost draw a straight line here of what it's doing it didn't bow up and then curve over so it, you know the norm curved over so the anomaly from here to the the curve is actually a bit lower because it's not bending over uh, but it's still way way lower than than you'd expect and you can see um you know, higher resolution image here. Um, so this is Antarctic sea ice extent. Um, this is the Arctic uh, sea ice, Arctic sea ice extent, Arctic temperature, pressure, average monthly Arctic sea ice extent. This is that figure on the phytoplankton. Oh, it's just, okay, so it's just cycling through all the images in that paper. Um, yes, this is a concerning thing in the Arctic, the ice, the way that, what's going on in Fram Strait. I'll have to do a separate video of it, Antarctic sea ice extent. Okay, so that's the National Snow and Ice Data Center. Now, an article from about four years ago said glacial melting in Antarctica may become irreversible. It talked about the Thwaites Glacier, the so-called Doomsday Glacier. It's likely to thaw and trigger 50 centimeters of sea level rise. If this thing collapses and then the ice, uh, you know, this would be an, a near abrupt vertical line increase of sea level rise if this thing collapses. So that's worth keeping in mind. Um, and so this was a study that was done a few years ago, but it showed the rate of ice loss from five Antarctic glaciers had doubled in six years. It was five times faster than in the 1990s. Um, ice loss is spreading from the coast into the continent's interior, reduction of more than 100 meters in thickness of ice in some regions. So the Thwaites Glacier which is part of the West Antarctic ice sheet is believed to pose the greatest risk for rapid future sea level rise. So it's worth keeping an eye on this at all times. And, you know, the models on melt rates, et cetera, you know, are, are probably way underestimating what's going on. Okay, so I talked about the emperor penguins. So this study just came out um, recently. This article's from August 24th. Um, it studied what happened last year, last November. Um, there was massive loss of thousands of chicks, penguin chicks, uh, due to record low sea ice levels. So there were breeding failures in the Bellingshausen Sea without precedent as multiple colonies across large regions all failed in a single season. Okay, so these, uh, Thousands of emperor penguin chicks across four colonies in Antarctica are believed to have died because of record low sea ice levels that caused a catastrophic breeding failure in late 2022, according to the new research. And this was just published, uh, like I said, um, in the last uh, few weeks. So analysis of satellite images showed the breakup of usually stable sea ice 
and the disappearance of the colonies at a time when the chicks had not yet grown their waterproof feathers. So when the chicks are very young, they have to stay on the ice and they don't have waterproof feathers. So if the ice melts and they're dunked, they, even if they get back on the ice, they freeze to death. Um, they're very, very reliant on sea ice. So they're, they face a very uncertain future. Um, the breeding failures in the Bellingshausen Sea were without precedence. It's the first time multiple colonies across a large region had all failed in a single season. So this is um, the Antarctic Peninsula. This is the Bellingshausen Sea. This is the Antarctic sea ice anomaly for November 2022 compared to the 1991 to 2020 uh, sea extent. And, you know, this is a recent 30-year sea extent. And you can see uh, sea ice extent. You can see the ice is all gone here. And this is the regions where, where you know, it's a grim story. You know, these cute, fluffy chicks, they don't have their waterproof coat and... Uh, coats dying in large numbers. Okay, uh, this is daily Antarctic sea ice extent. Um, last updated August 23rd, and you can see how, you know, I showed you how it's way, way lower um, than it should be. Now what they do is, is they can see, they can use satellites to see the, um, the excrement, the, the brown guano that is excreted from these penguins. Okay, so they can see these large patches of, 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 of dark areas on top of the ice, the buildup of excrement on the white sea ice. So that you can see these colonies, these emperor penguin colonies from, from satellites. And I'll talk about the original study in a minute, but the sea ice broke up from late October to early December at colonies at Verde Inlet, Smiley Island, Bryant Coast, and Perfrogner Point. Many parts of the region had near total loss of sea ice, so the estimate is that as many as 7,000 chicks perished. Um, if the chicks get immersed, they'll drown. If they get back up on the ice, they'll freeze because they don't have their waterproof feathers at that stage. Okay, there was one place that was, um, there was some breeding, and I'll show you the actual stats on the different breeding. There was a previously recorded breeding failure at a large colony in the Weddell Sea. The adults moved to another colony about 100 kilometers or less than 100 kilometers away. So the colonies can be very, you know, as there's fewer and fewer colonies, they're further and further apart. So their survival uh, just drops off a cliff. There was a 1500 kilometer region in Lent that lost almost all its sea ice. We have no real idea what happens if there's no ice. Well, we do know, they just die. About 30% of the known 62 emperor peng penguin colonies in Antarctica have been affected by partial or total sea ice loss since 2018. Well, there's four less at just, in, just from last year, late last year. These emperor penguins, they're featured in the animated film, the Happy Feet films, it's it's unusual. They've not come under pressure from hunting, fishing, or loss of habitat up to now. But with the with the sea ice collapsing, they're collapsing as well. Global heating is the main long-term threat. Projections by 2100 show 90% of colonies could be so small that they are essentially extinct. And the, here's a female scientist, Dr. Barbara Wynecki senior research scientist at the Australian Antarctic Division. She's made dozens of visits to emperor penguin colonies. There's no doubt that thousands have died. By October, chicks form these creches, which is like little nests, while both their parents are out catching fish, but they're nowhere near being waterproof. They still have their downy or fluffy plumage. If the ice breaks out before they can safely enter the water, the plumage becomes waterlogged and basically the chicks die of exposure. Yeah, it's really, it's really horrendous. Um, there's a huge connection between sea ice loss and ecosystem annihilation and we're seeing it here in real time. Okay, so let, here's, a, here's a couple definitions, the crash it's a nursery where babies and young children are cared for during the working day for people 
uh, but for birds, it's, uh, you know, it's like, uh, they, it's, it's the area where they're all huddling for warmth, etc., while their parents are off uh, fishing. And then the other term I need to tell you about is the fledge. Um, it's fledging is where the young bird develops wing feathers that are large enough for flight, or in the case of the penguins that are waterproof. Okay, so here's the paper, you know, very, very sad paper. It's open access. Just Google the title, have a look at it. You can download it as a PDF or just read it, um, you know, in this format. Um, Record low 2022 Antarctic sea ice led to catastrophic breeding failure of emperor penguins. Okay, so let's just have a look at the, uh, the, the photos, um, the images. So here's the sea ice. Uh, this is when the chicks do their crutching. Um, and this is when they do their fledging and the sea ice uh, extent uh, is just plummeted off a rock, okay? But specifically in those regions. So this is the anomaly, okay? Uh, you know, 100% anomaly, loss of sea ice here in these regions, some areas over here, but you know, there's chicks all around, but these are the ones that got massacred in this area because of the sea ice loss. So let's have a look. Okay, this is the the sea ice. This is a closer view of that region, um, the Belling Bellingshausen Sea, and the black dots are the penguin colonies. So one here, one here, one here, and one here. And these ones got wiped out. The, all the little baby chicks just died because there was no sea ice. And there were, this area did have sea ice, these ones survived. So four massive colonies just wiped out. And again, you can detect the colonies and how based on the excrement that you can see that they leave on the white sea ice and then the sea ice all melted out from them. Um, this, is an, this is a progression showing the five different um, breeding colonies in that region and the month, October, November, December of last year. Um, and what you can see is the dark blue uh, is where you can see the colonies, the blue circles, the dark blue circles, the, the um, light blue hexagons, there's ice still present, but there's no sign of the colony. So no brown pixels on the white ice, so no excrement on the ice, so no, essentially no colonies. Okay, um, and the orange squares are where the sea ice has just disappeared. So early here, uh, this was the first colony to be nailed, the Verde Inlet colony. And then the next one to be wiped out was essentially the Smiley Island one, and then the Bryant Coast one, and those three. And there was still a bit of sea ice here, but the, this colony was nixed over here too. Just didn't appear. Um, so there's only one colony, you know, where there's actual sea ice, but there's no um, ground pixels. So even on this colony, you know, this colony was hit hard too. And again, all of these colonies are here, you know, the, the five different colonies. So you can see the progression of the, of the, ex, of the extermination, the complete uh, loss of, of the uh, chicks, these little tiny chicks. So this is what we're doing to the, the planet here. What else do we see? Okay, this is um, showing the five colonies, showing the progressive sea ice extent and uh, the circled areas, images where the brown pixels of guano staining are highlighted in yellow circles. So again, the penguins um, excrete on the ice, they darken the ice, stain the ice, and you can see that from satellites. So you can see the staining here and then basically disappearing as the ice disappears. Same thing here, 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 and here. So time progression at the five different locations. So this, you know, we're just documenting the collapse of yet another uh, species. And then there's individual information on each of the, uh, each of the colonies, the breeding pairs, et cetera. Um, have a look at this paper, you know, it's, it's really, 
it, it, it's it's uh, it's what we're what we're, we're you know everything is connected. Wipe you know the lo the complete loss of Arctic Antarctic sea ice in this region. Um, I'll bring up my map again. You know in this whole region the complete loss of Antarctic sea ice and the colonies just kaput. Okay, um, you know, this is from last year, uh, last summer, about a year ago, just over a year ago. So the Arctic's warmed nearly four times faster than the globe since 1979. And now we're seeing it with, um, the, with Antarctica. But I just want to show you a couple points here to keep in mind about this uh, temperature amplification, polar temperature amplification. First, you know, you can do all the temperature graphs with the Arctic versus the, uh, you know, see how, how much the Arctic is changing compared to other regions. Um, but what I really want to show you in this, I'll get to it in a minute. Um, sensitivity up to the time window, 43 year tracking records, Arctic amplification. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. So this is Arctic amplification um over the 43 year record 1979 to 2021 the ratio how much more the arctic is warming relative to the rest of the planet and you can see the huge um seasonal this is observations and this was from models you know models are way lower than expected but you can see um that in january you know the, the, this is the let me try to uh so this is the, the seasonal change. Annually, it's just under four, okay? And that depends on, you know, where you define the Arctic as starting, you know, which definition, because there's multiple definitions for what's the Arctic. And you can see that the amplification is really high in November. So this is November, October, November, December. And you can see, you know, it's also high in January, February, March, but it drops as you go into the summer. Um, so it goes up to about five and a half um, in the winter and goes as low as about just under two in July. Okay, so th there's a big seasonal variation to Arctic temperature amplification. And we'll see the same sort of thing in Antarctica. So I just wanted to point that out really and I think uh, that's all I wanted to show you from this paper. There's also I mentioned that there's trends and variability in the southern annular mode over the common error. So this is short the short is SAM, S-A-M, southern annular mode and it's the leading mode of atmospheric variability in the extratropical southern hemisphere it's got wide ranging effects on ecosystems and society. It's very important, right, for the Southern Hemisphere, but paleoclimate reconstructions disagree on its variability and trends over the common era. Um, okay, so they use data assimilation with a model to reconstruct the SAM over the past 2000 years. Um, and uh, they found no evidence of forced response in SAM variability prior to the 20th century, but they found that there's a modern positive trend outside the two sigma range of the, right, going on. So the SAM seems to be increasing in strength in the Southern Hemisphere, and you would, that would normally be thought to cool the Antarctic, Antarctica Peninsula, the Antarctic continent, but that's not happening. Okay, so the warming is exceeding what you, the drop that you would expect from the SAM. I also mentioned the ozone um, has, has an impact too. So here's a reconstruction over time of the SAM index from 1900 to now, and you can see that the SAM index is strengthening. Okay, it's a significant trend um, here's another index here, you know, and it's popping up. Okay, and that affects climate in the, in the Southern Hemisphere, in Australia, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of other data here. This is a reconstructed comparison going back to the year 1000. Okay, so you can see there is variability of the SAM 
um, but lately, you know, we're we're exceeding that variability, basically. Okay, so the winds are changing, and that's also having effects on sea ice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, um, and this is a paper which came out on the record warming at the South Pole during the past three decades. So this is a study of a weather station at the South Pole um, and what's happened over the last 30 years. So over the last three decades, the South Pole has experienced a record high statistically significant warming of 0 0.61 plus or minus 0 0.34 degrees Celsius per decade, 0.61. That's more than three times the global average of 0.18, right? So they used an ensemble, a collection of climate model experiments. They showed that the recent warming lies within the upper bounds of the simulated range of natural variability. Well, it's gone <coughs> out of the range of natural variability now. They say that the warming resulted from a strong cyclonic anomaly in the Weddell Sea caused by increasing sea surface temperatures in the Western Tropical Pacific. This circulation coupled with the positive polarity of the Southern Annular Mode advected warm and moist air from the South Atlantic into the Antarctic um, interior. So let's have a look at the map and see what's happening. What is this actually saying? What it's saying is that there's a cyclone or a low in this region of the Weddell Sea. Okay, so low pressure here, high pressure around. Air moves from high pressure to low pressure and rotates to the left in the southern, is deflected to the left in the southern hemisphere. That's opposite to the northern hemisphere. So air moving this way into the low pressure deflects to the left. So you, the circulation around this low is going to be this way. And so you can see what's happening. The air here is picking up. It's pick, picking up warm air and bringing it right in and bringing it right over the continent. Okay, so that so they're saying that this is a recurring mode. So it's bringing the warm air, like I said, circulating around the low right into the continent. So that's what that's what's going on here. These results underscore the intimate linkage of interior Antarctic climate to tropical variability. So variability of, of higher latitudes. Um, atmospheric internal variability can induce extreme regional climate change over the Antarctic interior. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the figures. So this is, this is very, very, um, so circulation changes in the Weddell Sea, which I just pointed out are causing these record warming at the South Pole. Um, and you can see um, the most recent 30-year period of 1989 to 2018 had the largest 30-year annual mean warming trend on record of 0 0.61 uh, degrees Celsius per decade. 0 0.61, de that's huge, right? Three times the global average rate. So the South Pole is warming at three times the global average rate. We've got Antarctica temperature amplification, the same sort of polar amplification that is occurring. And of course, we know how that affects the jet stream in the northern hemisphere. So it'll be doing the same thing in the southern hemisphere, although that signal is, is becoming needs will, will become much clearer. I mean, it's not as it's not as noticeable for a couple of reasons. One is that the um, the circulation, the jet streams are stronger in that region because we've got higher temperature contrast between the very cold Antarctica and the um, and the Australia sort of temperatures, um, and also the uh, Ar the Antarctic temperature amplification. It's just getting going. It's not as it's not as uh, pronounced as the Arctic one. Okay, so we're seeing those sort of things happening. Um, okay, uh, so here's some here's the temperature at, at the weather station at the South Pole increasing. Um, Thirty-year running trends. There's lots of statistical analysis. So here we go. The South Pole, 0 0.61 degrees warmer uh, per. Year. Okay, Vostok is half that. So there's warming at other stations, but you know, and then you have the the seasonal 
things. So December, January, February is the high is is 0.62. March, April, May that's when you go into the um, yeah that that's remember the seasons are reversed in the southern hemisphere. Um, 0.89 June, July, August is is uh, 0.35 and then September, October, November is 0.61. So we've got the shoulder seasons um, and the, uh, you know, the, this is Northern Hemisphere winter, Southern Hemisphere summer, Northern Hemisphere summer, Southern Hemisphere winter. Okay, so you can see the seasonal variation and I showed you the plot of, from the Arctic temperature amplification paper of the seasonal variation then. And then there's lots of figures on wind directions and et cetera, you know, stuff like that. But I don't think I'll go into all those details. It talks about the effect of the SAM. There's probably mention of the ozone as well, you know, those sort of things. So there's lots of factors, but the net result, let's just go back to the beginning here. So these are the key factors that the Antarctic warming is much faster than models predicted. Okay, we're seeing a strong Antarctic uh, temperature amplification, similar to what, we, what we've known about and, and have observed in the Arctic. Um, and uh, yeah, all of these factors are, are likely to greatly accelerate uh, global sea level rise. So. You know, I'll just remind you to Google, you know, can global sea levels rise seven meters by 2070? And I did the original video on that topic, uh, you know, I don't know, three, four years ago, and then did some updates a couple of years ago. So, you know, back of the envelope calculations uh, show that, uh, you know, that, that, that's sort of my, you know, gut feeling for, for what's going to happen. We're going to have massive sea level rise. So all of these things that are happening, you know, new findings bring us closer and closer to that point. I'm not, I'm, I won't change my number. I don't increase it or decrease it. I just, these are all sort of accelerations that, uh, I'm, that are not, not surprising me. So this is hard data from Antarctic ice cores. You know, it's, it's, in undisputable data and it shows that the temperatures you know if you go back a thousand years we have warming outside of natural swings occurring now okay well thanks for listening um, please consider going to my website paulbeckwith.net and donating to my paypal account to support my research and videos and uh again you can see i've got a few um a few uh, web websites pegged, so I'll just start uh, start going back, and you know when I have none up there, you know that I'm ready for just vi the videos, you know, on stuff that's just happening, you know, and and I can never do these sequentially because you know by next week some some other catastrophe will have happened. I mean, look at the flooding in Greece uh, at the moment. Look at the Omega block in Europe. Um, the uh, torrential rains and flooding in many other parts of the world, heat waves in other parts. And, you know, there's always uh, stuff just about every day that I could do videos on. So make sure in the comments that, you know, if you think I'm missing something or need to revisit something, let me know. And, uh, you know, if you go to my YouTube channel, um, where is the, right here, you know, you can just do a, this is not my YouTube channel. Okay, I, I should show you this. Um, this is my YouTube channel here. You can do a search um, for, uh, you know, particular specific topics. And, you know, I might be due for covering things which I covered a year or so ago and need to revisit. Also, keep in mind that I do videos for the Climate Emergency Forum. So, five days ago, this video was uh, just uploaded on the AMOC Amok, um, where I talk about that in great detail with Dale. And uh, 
ferocious floods. I think I was in that one too. Yeah, that was 12 days ago. And the Pyrocene, I think I was in that one too. So I've been in a number, uh, well, these are climate emergency form. This, sorry, this wasn't Dale. This is with uh, Regina and Peter Carter. Okay, so I'm in all of these videos for the Climate Emergency Forum with Peter and Regina. Um, okay, so, you know, here, here's the people involved. There's myself, there's Peter Carter, um, and uh, these are some channels that are featured and recommended, Regina. And I, the Facing Future ones, which I are these ones so group facing future i'm a guest in a number of these videos so i was in this one talking about the widening gyre hurricanes you know um we're in hurricane season we have some hurricanes to really be concerned about like hurricane lee is the latest one uh i was talking with peter carter and dale um earth ablaze um and this is a great one, Peter Wadhams, uh, talking about glaciers, uh, right? So these are, these are well worth, uh, you know, having a look at to the, these videos. So I appear, you know, fairly often in these videos as well. So anyway, thanks for um, watching. Um, like I said, please uh, consider donating or setting up a monthly donation to support my research and videos um, on PayPal. I also, you can also just Google my name on uh, Patreon and uh, set up something that way if, if you prefer. Um, okay, well, thanks uh, again uh, for listening. And, you know, we, we can't ignore the Southern Hemisphere. There's huge amounts of carbon sequestered in the ocean, by the oceans in the Southern Hemisphere, right? Uh, huge, huge amounts of carbon. So, you know, as the oceans warm and become stratified, if we lose that carbon sink in the Southern Hemisphere, then the greenhouse gas levels are gonna skyrocket even more in the atmosphere around the globe. And, you know, the, the tipping points affecting the circulation of the planet, whether they be the atmosphere, the jet streams, or the oceans, the ocean currents, the AMOC, the thermohaline circulation, those are tipping points that I call the mother of all tipping points because those affect the entire planet, uh, you know, pretty, pretty significantly. So anyway, uh, thanks again and bye for now.